Oh, well, that was an experiment to see how that works. Well, hello, and I hope there are people here watching. I see I've got a few people. So thank you for joining us. I appreciate that. Well, um, what this is, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, try stuff, right? I mean, I got a lot of time. <laughs> this is a brand new year. Uh, I need to get stuff going because uh, hopefully now with the uh, vaccine rollout, uh, 21 will be a much better year than 20, although 20 started out really, really good, I have to say. Um, it was going to be a spectacular year, and uh, we had a literally, a literal once-in-a-lifetime event happened to everybody in the world. The whole entire world shared in this unfortunate event, but there is light at the end of the tunnel, as they say, and things are looking up. So I just wanted to go ahead and talk about some board game stuff, some news, what's going on around the world of board gaming in the industry. And here's the whole thing. I'm trying to make this interactive. So if you really think you want to join the chat, you have something to say, I'll bring you in uh, on video. You can come in and... Uh, join us, talk, and do whatever. And I hope you can hear this now, too. I have my uh, speaker in. If there's anybody in chat, if you could just say, give me a thumbs up, whether you can hear me or not, um, I'd appreciate that, or say yes or no or anything. Is there anybody there who could just say hi and let me know that you can hear me? Let me just make sure chat's working. Oh, okay. Yes, good. You guys can hear me. Very good. Well, thank you, Rob. Thank you for joining us here. I really appreciate it. So uh, one of the first things I want to get into is one of the um, uh, biggest things. Hello, Gray Lawn. I don't know who that is, but hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, is about Board Game Geek. Now, I want to go ahead and share my screen here. And I want to uh, show you uh, Board Game Geek. And let me tell you, they have done a lot to their channel right now hello john thank you for coming here now this is their old site and those of you who don't know uh boardgamegeek.com bgg they are the everything for board games for lack of a better term right if you want videos if you want forums if you want discussions playthroughs files pictures photos anything they are the resource the database for everything having to do with board games and um there's some good stuff we'll talk about later that i'll be doing with them also but as you can see this was the old site here now it was a lot um, it was very text heavy right as you can see and it wasn't that intuitive for um, a lot of people like me who are more or less computer illiterate, I'm not a very technologically um, adept person at all. So it was kind of very hard for me. So as you can see along the left side, it's text, 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 text. Down here, text, 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 text. It's all text, not very good. And over here on the right, they decided to put a little bit of video, color it up a little bit. But that just happened recently, like in the past year. So now if you notice up top here, where it says explore and dashboard. So this dashboard part, this is now the old look. So this is what you are used to, have been used to since 20 years in his existence. But just about three, four months ago, they have now put this up here. Now this is the new explore. Right away, look how bright this is. Uh, over here, they've got the nice thumbnails, they've got the big picture. And look, if you go down now, look at the hotness. Now, before over on the left side, that was just like text in little tiny pictures. But now you can very clearly just click on a panel, go to your favorite game or the new hotness game. You can see what they are. They have nice thumbnails. And the good thing about Board Game Geek, as I was saying, just pick Dune Imperium right here. So you go to Dune Imperium. Uh, whoops, I think I did something wrong there. I might have clicked something else. There we go. So we're at the hotness. So here, if you click Dune Imperium, just like that, uh, what it will do is you can see it'll take you to the Dune Imperium page. And as I said, folks, here it is. Look, it gives you ratings, forums, images, videos, files, stats, versions, expansions, everything having to do with this game. It gives you a rating up here, what people um, rate it as, who've played it, uh, publishers, designers, artists. It's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, board game geek and you know what they just had their year-end thing and they barely hit or surpassed the numbers they had for last year and they only asked for a minimum i think it's uh 15 bucks a year and you can give you know whatever you want if you got a million dollars you want to donate go ahead and do that but uh you know all of us whoever uses bgg 
uh, should should consider contributing at least the minimum just to have access to all this stuff. So as you can see, nice look at this pictures. So they, there's there's this live stream going on right now. So if I were to click this, you can see there's somebody painting shows you that. So that's right in the front page. Down here they have featured videos. Board, but look how nice this looks. See to me, this is really nice to somebody like me who's just you know a, a computer idiot. You know I've got a laptop. Uh, it's like five years old. I just don't do a whole lot. I search on the internet. But look at this. This is just really, really nice. So they've done a really nice job with the review. Look at that. The giveaways, reviews, the con the geek list, blogs. So as you see, like these blogs in the game forum, this is what the text used to look like. But now it's uh, very minimal. And now they've got all of these thumbnails, hot videos, game spotlights. You can go down here. Look at this. It's just really, really nice. Shopping. Uh, they have a creator spotlight to see, you know, creators who are standing out doing nice things. So I think they've done a really good job. And look, if I just really click right here on the old dashboard to the old BGG site and it goes back, look at that. It's just uh, not quite the same at all, is it? It's just <laughs> not as appealing, not as attractive. So they've done a really, really nice job with that. So I just wanted to go ahead and point that out. So as I said, Board Game Geek is probably number one. So something else, the number two site that is probably um, we're all familiar with in board gaming is the Dice Tower. And I wanted to go ahead and uh, bring that up because they are making a lot of changes. One of the things they've stopped is doing his di uh, his components drop. Now, I don't know if you guys uh, know what that was about, but Tom would go ahead and he'd come on for about, I don't know, 30 seconds and give a brief, um, uh, oh, wait, let me just, uh, sorry, let me just make sure I did something right. He would give a brief little um, ex explanation of the game. Oh, yeah, there we go. Let me make sure I do that. Share audio. Um, there we go. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Again, I'm not a great computer person. Anyway, he would give a little brief overview of the game. They would have a little overlay screen telling you the number of players, designers, stuff like that. And then he would be dropping all the components like on the table, just literally just dropping them from the box. To be perfectly honest, it made me a little anxious because, you know, um, I don't know, some of, you know, like some of us who are sleevers or we put our games in little containers, take really good care of them. Just watching that, yeah, just kind of made me a little anxious. So he's stopping doing that. You know, he's doing a panning now. He's doing other things. But here's something else I wanted to show you, which kind of surprised me. So he called me the other day and we had a little talk about some things he was going on he wanted to do. And I was like, yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be something really nice. Anyway, this is what he announced uh, on the show today. And uh, please, if somebody could, uh, hello, Tommy, thank you for joining. Uh, please let me know if you can hear this video from the audio. But here's something he just announced today, which uh, makes me feel good. It's kind of surprising. Here we go. Secondly, uh, Tim Metvier, who does uh, Meepleville, uh, the, probably the best interviewer on the Internet, and he also runs Dice Tower West, uh, he's going to be doing a series with us where he'll take an older game from his collection because uh, he has a huge the Dice Tower West library. He'll play that game and then review it with me or with Z, and we'll go back and forth, me remembering having played it a while ago and my thoughts on it, or maybe I played it recently, you know, maybe. Tim having just played it for the first time and get those two views on that. By the way, if you have a good name for that show, let us know. Um, <laughs> so there you go. That's pretty cool, right? I'll actually be doing a show on the, the Dice Tower now with Tom and perhaps Z. So um, I don't know when that'll be coming to you, hopefully uh, in the near future. But uh, I'm really excited about it. Like I said, when he called me the other day and we were talking, because we talk usually at least once a week, you know, to just keep updated about, you know, uh, Dice Tower West, just other stuff and just to chat, you know, because we are friends after all. Um, and we talked about this and I was like, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. And then to really see that it's going to happen, it's going to be a kind of show is really kind of exciting. So I'm really looking forward to that. Now, um, here is something. If Again, if anybody wants to uh, jump in and talk, because like I said, I, I'd, I'd love to hear somebody who's got strong opinions about this next subject I like to bring up. But that is about Kickstarters, okay? Now, I just got uh, a Kickstarter today, the 
Anachrony Infinity Box, which, oh my goodness gracious, it's massive. It's huge. Um, I can't wait to see that. But the thing that I really want to talk about is um, about Kickstarter in general, okay? So before I get into this and show you this, uh, here's what I want to talk about. And again, if anybody would like to, um, oh, hey, Jazz, how you doing? Thanks for coming in. I really appreciate it. Again, Jazz, you're welcome to drop, you know, stop in if you'd like to hear this. Yeah, Ed, like he said, the Infinity Box is huge. I have it over there. I haven't opened it yet because it's, I love Anachrony. Anachrony is literally one of my favorite games of all time. And I'm like, I know I'm going to enjoy it so much, and it's going to be such, like, I'm probably going to be crying when I open the box, right? But, uh, like, I'm, I'm afraid to touch it and open it, right? Because I saw the video, and when that lady was pulling stuff out of the box, it was unbelievable. It, it, anyway, it was, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. So, anyway, Kickstarter now, okay? Okay, so as I'm talking about this, uh, write in the comments that you would like to... Um, Join the topic and join the discussion and talk about this. Here is my point, my topic about Kickstarter. Again, first of all, as I told you, and, and maybe this is just me, okay? So I want, want to keep that over the discussion. I'm not an uh, uh, internet person, a technological person, whatever you want to call it at all. I'm a dinosaur, okay? I'm 57 years old. Um, I'm really one of those kind of people, you know, just anyway. So today... Um, I just got an email back because about a week ago, I emailed the people from Dwellings of Eldervale and I was like, hey, where's my Kickstarter? I haven't gotten it yet. So they sent me an email today and they're like, hey, it was delivered. Here's the FedEx thing. They showed me and all that kind of stuff. Now, this is nothing against um, whatever the name of the company is because um, it's a great company or Dwellings of Eldervale. Nothing against them. Here is my problem with Kickstarter. And again, I'd love to have somebody come on here and talk about it so we can talk some more about it. But... You could literally have 10 Kickstarter games and they be handled by like 10 different companies, right? The, um, whatever you call them, uh, what are those third party companies called, right? Who handle the Kickstarters. So, you know, sometimes the emails get lost. They want you to fill out surveys. They want you to do this in the beginning from what I can remember. Cause I think my first Kickstarter game, if I can remember, um, was Tiny Epic Galaxies, I think. Might have been my first whatever. But it seemed real simple and real direct. It seemed like the only communication, the only contact I had was directly with Scott Ohms or his company, whatever. Talk to them. I get, you know, it's like, it's like once. Hey, I buy. That was it. The next thing I know, I'm getting a package in the mail. It was such an easy transaction. Now it seems like there's three, four steps in the way, and sometimes you get caught up and lost. Like, for example, here's what I'm going to bring up and I'm going to share with you. Um, and again, if anybody has any more information on this, please let me know. So this is GameFound. Now, Tom was telling me a little bit about this, and apparently they are trying to take the place of Kickstarter specifically for games. Um, and again, I could be wrong about this. I don't know. But hopefully, they will be a one-stop shop. So that way, when you buy the game, everything kind of goes through them, and it'll just be straight through them, direct to you. Because I also had a problem with GameFound. And again, it, it it's on me. Okay, I got I to gotta put the blame on me. Um, I had Kickstarter, I don't know, four or five games unbeknownst to me, again, that were through GameFound. So all of a sudden, I'm like, where are my Kickstarters? What's going on? This and that. And I eventually found the GameFound site, and then I see I've got, like, all these credits, unused credits. So I had to, like, spend my credits that I had prepaid for Kickstarter to get this game, to get that, because then I had to fill out a form to get shipping, to get to add more credits for the shipping, to complete the thing. You complete the pledge, then this and that, and blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, oh, so now I'm getting my game. Because you know what? What What is that one? Um, oh, geez, I don't even know if I'm logged in. I'm probably not. But uh, what was their big one? I, I, anyway, I can't remember. I still haven't gotten it yet. Because I think what I did is for that big one that they had, oh man, I wish I could remember the name, is uh, you had the option of getting your Kickstarter in different shipments at different times. But I said, no, I wanted it all together. So still to this point, I haven't gotten anything. 
Um, and I don't know. Oh man, what was that? What was that? I wish I knew what that. Let me see. Am I logged in? Oh, I am logged in. Oh wait, let me go to back. No, not that one. I'll tell you what this is. Let me go to back projects. You don't have any back projects. Oh, maybe it wasn't uh, this game found then. <laughs> See what I mean, folks? I'm horrible at this. But anyway, I still haven't got. No, it wasn't Frost Haven. It was. Uh, man, I'm sorry. Let me. Okay, I'm gonna have to. Give me just one second, guys. Because now um, I gotta go look this up. See what that was. Because it's gonna bother me. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll have it just a second because it's been around for a long time um, and it's really, really late um, for everything. So let me see what that was. Um, there it is. Tainted Grail. Yeah. Tainted Grail. Yeah, taint, very good, Ed. You got it right there. Tainted Grail, Fall of Babylon. So some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? I still haven't gotten anything from them because, again, I think I did the I want it all at once. So, you know, it's just it's, – it's really unfortunate that all of this stuff is uh, going on. And, again, I don't know what you guys think of this situation. Um, I'd love to chat with anybody. If anybody looks – hello, Happy New Year. Thank you for coming in. Ponto Hornblower. Don't know who you are, but thank you for coming in. I appreciate that. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, so if anybody would like to chat about that, I, I, I'd love to uh, talk about that because, anyways, it's just something that just really bothering me, and I hope it's really true with GameFound. I hope they fix this problem for people like me because, again, I don't know if it's a me problem or if it's a Kickstarter problem, right? Because at the end of the day, Kickstarter – just takes 10%. What else do they do, right? I mean, they host the site, you go in there and, and click, but after that, they're done. The projects, once the project's funded, they just take their money, right? They don't even hold people responsible if they don't fulfill or, or do your game. So it's kind of like, what do they do? They don't, you know what I mean? So hopefully GameFound helps people like me who really need the help and could use the help. Um, so yeah, that, that would be kind of nice. So uh, one of the things I want to talk about next is the top games of 2020 that I had uh, that I wanted to talk about and uh, also what everybody else in the industry, okay? So I did a little uh, top 10 video on the Summer Spectacular for uh, the Dice Tower or the Winter Spectacular for the Dice Tower. So going from 10 to 1, the ones that I had put, and I only played two of these, I had put one small step, which is that, you know, um, astronaut lamp moon landing kind of thing. Of course, you know, my age, 69, I was six years old. Who didn't want to be an astronaut, right? That was that was just amazing back then. That was real Star Wars for somebody old like me. Um, then Paris, the Kiesling and Kramer game. Dune Imperium, which everybody's talking about. Isle of Cats, which I have played with my wife. She loves that. Curious Cargo, Capstone Games. It's a small box game, but I heard it's real crunchy. Um, just fantastic, so I'm waiting to get that. Praga Kaput Regni by Vladimir Suchi, another one of my favorite games. Um, what is it, that Pulsar 2849, because he does that one. Oh, geez, I can't think of the other one that I like by him. Oh, Underwater Cities, one of my favorite games of all time. Love Underwater Cities, so I wanted to do that. Next is Pandemic uh, Legacy Season Zero, which I want to play. The Crew, I've played that one, trick-taking game. Number two, Castles of Tuscany, and number one from 2020 that I haven't played yet. However, I just found out it's not getting released till this month, is Hallertau by Uva Rosenberg, because I'm a big Agricola fan, big Uva Rosenberg fan, love his game, so I cannot wait for that. However, oh, so Jazz, you've done Curious Cargo. Oh, wow. Hey, Jazz, do me a favor. I don't know if you're hooked up if you're if you, to your camera. Do you, do you want to come in for a second and just talk um, a little bit about Curious Cargo and maybe some of these games? I think it'd be kind of cool to have a guest on here. You know what? I'm going to send you a link, Jazz, okay? And uh, if you want to come in, please do. And if not, that's okay. But uh, I'll hear you when you pop in. So here we go. Oh, wait. Let me just do it this way. I can invite. There we go. Gmail. Are you guys seeing this or not? Okay, you're not good. 
Ah, uh, I am horrible. Just horrible. All right, here we go. All right, there, I sent him an email, so if he wants to join us, he can. It'd be good to have him come in here. Uh, he said a little admit, okay? So let me go, oh, let me bring this up here. So this is what Emmanuel said. Overseas or outside North America is even worse. Sending Kickstarters to Mexico, considered not friendly for deliver, elevates the price almost twice. Yeah, you know what, Emmanuel? I, I feel you there, right? Because a lot of you... Um, may know Amy uh, Amy and Maggie, right? Thinker Themer down in Australia. And they tell me they have big problems. And it's funny, right? Because China is like right there. So you would think it would be, they would get games before we do um, because it's much closer shipping and all that. But anyway, they have a, a big problem with that, right? So as I was going around the internet, I looked at Rado. I looked at the Dice Tower. I looked at... Uh, Brothers Murph. I looked at just a whole bunch of different lists, like all the people who put out and put, everybody, right? I mean, anybody who's a content creator put out their top games of 2020. Now, um, the one and two, I'll just go ahead and get those out of the way because, and then I want to talk about the, the top four that I saw. So one and two, it seemed like, what were they? I'm sorry, Dune Imperium and Dwellings of Eldervale, which I was just talking about earlier. It seemed like those were a sort of unanimous, excuse me, in everybody's top 10. Like they pretty much made the majority of top 10s, those two games that I looked at, Dwellings of Eldervale and Dune Imperium. So I still have yet to play those two games. I'm really excited about getting those to the table because obviously they're very good. The third one that I heard really, really good things about, um, again, which I think is probably more up my alley, which I think I'd really like, is the Lost Ruins of Arnak. So I'm real excited about playing that as well, getting that to the table. And the fourth one that uh, really kind of surprised me, that um, because, again, a lot of the games are the heavier ones, right, that, um, you know, the heavy Euros and stuff. Oh, hey, Ruel, how you doing? Oh, folks right there, let me go ahead and bring him up real quick. Uh, let me see this. So Ruel Gaviola. Thank you, Ruel, for dropping in. I really appreciate that. Ruel has uh, a channel on Twitch, Rolling with Ruel. He was also just recently a featured uh, uh, creator on Board Game Geek, so go check him out on that page over there. And he's got a YouTube channel, and he's on part of the Tabletop Network, I believe it is, where they've got a whole network of people who get together on Twitch. And, um, again, this is my very first stream. So they, they watch people on Twitch. Then when they're done with their show, they leave and they go bring all their people and they raid other people and do all this kind of stuff. It's re really kind of cool. So he's doing a great job. And as he said, Ruel will be uh, on the show Wednesday. I'll go ahead and uh, plug that real quick, but I'll be talking about that a little bit later. Doing a show this Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Remember how I showed you that BGG page right on front? If you just go to BGG, whether you go to the dashboard or the Explorer, the old site or the new site, will be right there on the front page. Our show called The More meeples of Marrier, 6 p.m. Pacific time on Wednesday. So please come enjoy that show. Uh, and Ruel, thank you so much for stopping in. I really appreciate that. Um, but as I said, yeah, Lost Ruins of Arnak. Um, yeah, I really, really want to get that to the table. But the fourth game, which was kind of surprising because um, it's it appears to be a lighter game. And again, I have not played it. I am trying my best to get more games to the table. Oh, Jazz just showed up, so I'll have him here in just a second. Um, but the game is Calico. So Calico is on the lighter side, and I'm really, really, really excited and pleased to see that Calico made it on so many people's list. And here's another shout out I want to get because Calico was put out by AEG. Um, if you go to my channel on YouTube, I do a lot of interviews. I interviewed John Zinzer. <laughs> that little brain fart there for a second. John Zinzer, the owner, uh, president, CEO of AEG. And uh, I interviewed him and they were the ones who put out Calico, but they've been on a tear right? They have a Calico, uh, they had Point Salad, they had Tiny Towns, they had, a, I don't know, whatever, a couple lady, but, um, oh, is it? Wow, look at that. Yeah, so uh, Sean G says Calico is a little bit crunchier than it appears. Oh, okay. But but again, Sean, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's a really good game, right? That's why it's so highly rated, but I, I think there's probably a big step between Calico and like Dune Imperium, right? That, that's what I'm talking about, uh, something like that. Are you ready to jump in here, Jazz? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and get this up here. Hello, Jazz. How's it going, Tim? 
good. This is Jazz. He is from the Lobby of Hobbies, as you can see right here. Well, thank you for joining, Jazz, because, again, I'm just trying to make this a little bit more interactive, like that people jump in and stop in. So um, now, um, yeah, see, I just want to bring this up real quick. So Ruel said the same thing. Calico is fantastic. Agreed is crunchy more than I expected. And AEG, yeah, they are doing a fantastic job, man. They, they're really killing it. So, Jazz, out of those four that I mentioned, Dwellings of Eldervale, Calico, Dune Imperium, Lost Ruins of Arnak, have you played any of those? I have all of them. I am still uh, waiting to play um, uh, Lost Ruins of Arnak and um, Dwellings of Eldervale. They're actually on my shelf. I was trying to get them through this, this past weekend. I couldn't get them through, but I did play a lot of Curious Cargo and Calico, again, which... I think I've mentioned before has so far it's in my top five for this sheet for 2020. Really? Oh huh? yeah. Yeah, it's definitely. And I, I would agree with Ruel. How's it going? Ruel? I see your comment over there. Um, definitely Calico is crunchier than you would think, but what's awesome I think about that game is that it's, it's very, um, you know, it's very inviting even to new casual players because it has a very uh, easy um, setup where if, you know, you want to play a lighter family style game, you don't have to use these, um, the three achievements. You can pretty much just go for laying your tiles down because it is, a, it is a tile placement game, a tile, um, what you would say, uh, Yes, yeah, like a puzzly tile placement game, but you can just pretty much go for buttons and try to gain cat points, and 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 that's it. So pretty much have two two ways of scoring points, but um, definitely when you add that element of the regular play with the um, the three achievement tiles in there, man, does it does it get crunchy? And this is one that we played, my wife and I, um, actually just last night we played it. Um, and this was her first time playing it, and she uh -huh. she really enjoyed it. Um, but we also played Curious Cargo, and uh, Curious Cargo. I will be honest that she said, "Well, I don't even like this game." I said, Let, "Why don't we just give it another try? <laughs> why don't we give it another try?" Because it, it's up there for my top of 2020. Um, okay, I hold on, hold on one second, guys, yeah. real quick. Uh, Ruel, I'm going to go ahead and send you an email too. You're more than welcome to jump in if you'd like. If not, just ignore the email. But it'd be great to have you join in too. Go ahead, Jazz. Oh yeah, um, but like I said, with Curious Cargo, Curious Cargo is it's super crunchy because it's almost it's it's it can kind of get a little frustrating. I think that was my wife's um, one comment was that, you know, you're trying to look for the perfect um, conveyor tile um, to try and you know place, but for some reason it just seems like it never comes across. But it is very rewarding when you get the right tile, or it just like magically happens where you start creating something that you didn't actually think you were making a proper connection. So it's one that. Sh Although she she was frustrated playing it, she said she is definitely open to giving it another try. So we're probably looking to get it played either, um, hopefully this weekend, um, but even as soon as maybe tomorrow. Oh, nice. Because also, uh, folks, Dwayne, uh, who has his channel, Blackboard Gaming, on YouTube, uh, his whole thing is trying to get his wife, Alicia, to play games. And that is one of the ones he taught her. And the same thing. He said that she loved it. She really loved it. So that's what I think is so good that Calico, because again, I mean, you might agree with me, uh, Jazz, Dwellings of Eldervale, Dune Imperium, Lost Ruins of Arnak are at like one level, right? Sort of in Calico, yeah. or just a little bit under. But yeah, how she loved it. So I like how a game that is more lighter, more palatable to a, a wider audience is getting so much heat and so many people are playing it and adding it to their top 10 lists. Oh, most definitely. I think... Um... One thing I, I actually just started kind of my YouTube this kind of beginning because I started with podcasting first and I'm kind of transitioning over into the YouTube realm and I'm actually going to be looking to drop two videos tomorrow. And my focus is pretty much um, I think I'm going to be starting. I haven't figured out the full name yet of this, the, the little um, tagline, but it's pretty much it's, it's pretty much going to be can they or can, do they dig it or, or can they dig it? And the idea is. I, you know, we want to reach some casual gamers and right. trying to figure out what games will bring in a casual gamer, but would also allow a veteran gamer or someone who's been in the hobby for a while to also enjoy it as well. Because we want to kind of transition them over. A lot of times I want to get a game off the shelf that's, of course, heavy that I want to play, but I can't do that with my with my family, especially no. with especially with COVID. You know, we're not able to, to get together with our you know regular gaming groups. So now we're, we're kind of having to settle for either digital platform or yep. our family who are not really gamers. So yeah, and that's, that's, that's a, yeah, and that's a yeah. great point, Jazz. First of all, I just want to say hello, Flo. Uh, Flo uh, down here who just joined us, she is uh, 
one of my longtime members at Meepleville. Uh, she's absolutely fantastic. She runs a ladies game group in Vegas. And uh, she's one of those kind of people, like a lot of people, it's just fantastic, where they have played a couple games, right? I'm sure we all know these people. We all played a couple of games, but you come in, you find a place like Meepleville or find this world of gaming and then lose your freaking mind. <laughs> <laughs> and she lost her mind and <laughs> she started buying all these games, playing all these games. But it's fantastic when people do that. That's what's so great about gaming, right? Is you get into it and you just love it and you want to share it and teach it. So she's a great, great ambassador uh, for gaming. So it's really, really nice. Thank you for joining us, Flo. Yeah, she has lost her mind for sure, as she says. <laughs> But yeah, and that's what I think we forget a lot of time, Jazz. So here's another uh, topic is a lot of us who like board game geek, right? Like I brought up and I paid a lot of attention to that because even maybe the Dice Tower has a little culpability, responsibility for this point too, is I think a lot of times we do tend to focus more on the heavier or the upper end of the games in this hobby, if you know what I yes, mean. Right? Definitely. Yeah. And a lot of times we don't give enough love or pay attention to the games that really are the ones that get people to join us at the table, right? Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. And I think, um, you know, like I said, when I, I actually sat down with my wife, who is my number one nemesis when it comes to gaming. She is very, very casual, but I can tell you, I teach her every single game that I that she's willing to play in my collection. And she has beat me, I want to say, probably 75% of the time of every <laughs> single game. And I, I try and figure it out because even games that I know the rules, the ins and outs, her brain works like it just it just comes together she figures out the puzzle really fast and i always tell her i says why don't you try some of these heavier crunchy games she says they're just not appealing to me she says i just want to play casually i want to be able to sit down you know you know just relax a little bit and i think you know even for people that i've seen at conventions um you know there's just some people who like to just have a game that they casually play whether it be you know like the holidays this past season where they just want to get together do something different with a, um, a, a, a group of people and just play something different than your typical Monopoly or Scrabble. And I right. think finding those games that, you know, they might not make a BGG top 100 list. Um, but yeah, they are the the bread and butter games that, you know, are like the essentials to have in your collection. And um, yeah. I know for me, and when it comes to games that are, uh, that I always think are essential in my collection, I really shoot for a lot of two player only games because my primary gaming partner is my wife. But I also think that when I'm getting together with somebody, um, it's easier for me to bring down a quick small box two player game that plays in under an hour or plays in 30 minutes that I can start introducing to them to the hobby instead of even bringing out like a game such as Ticket to Ride or Carker Zone because sometimes just the, the the sheer massiveness of the game and all the pieces can just intimidate somebody and they that's sometimes right. like oh that, that's I know Monopoly has a lot of little little pieces and components but this is just this is something I've never seen before so having I think those small box two player only games in your um in your collection is great and i see emmanuel actually uh, just made a comment about targi behind me right. right there and it is uh it's definitely in my top 10 of two player only games i love right. it i'm a worker, i'm a worker placement junkie and yeah, that one little, is, is great bit, yeah it's a little bit heavier than an yes. intro game for me because like again since we're talking about aeg i'm going to tell you right now the number one game I have been teaching in like the past six months to people, and it's almost an instant sell, instant, is Point Salad. Because oh, yeah. you can literally, I can teach and play a full game with four or five or six people in 15 minutes. Teach oh, and yeah. play. It's just amazing. And it, when they get done with it, they're like, yeah, buy it. You know, it's <laughs> games like Point Salad, I think, are just the perfect ones to bring into the hobby to really, really get people. So, again, well, thank you for joining me, Jazz. I'm glad you jumped in here real quick. Oh, uh, not a problem. Yeah, because, yeah, because Calico, it's really, really great. And uh, I will see you, Jazz. Again, he's joining oh, us. Yeah. On He's joining us on Wednesday uh, for our very first uh, More Than Meeples and Merrier show. And uh, you'll see him uh, throughout the month on other shows as well. So go check out his hobby uh, show, a Lobby of Hobbies. And go ahead, Real Jazz, real quick before you go, talk a little bit about the Lobby of Hobbies. Oh, thanks a lot, Sam, for having me. Um, yeah, everyone who's listening, uh, I want to thank you guys. Um, 
I have a channel called The Lobby of Hobbies, and our idea is enter, share, discover. We just want people to just join in, whether they're casual, whatever hobbies they're into. And we want to primarily inter introduce them to board games, which is a hobby that um, is great. Obviously, we're, we're here, we, we know it, but there's many people who don't understand the greatness of that hobby. And we just want to share it with them in hopes that they discover something new and that's something that they can actually put on the table and, and bring their own family together. So right now we're focusing on getting casual gamers in. Of course, I like the crunchy, heavier stuff, but a lot of our focus that we're going to be doing on our on our YouTube reviews and, and things like that are going to be those casual intro level games and how do we get um, finding a game that will be satisfying to us but also satisfying to um, a newcomer and not be too intimidating so yeah definitely check us out we're everywhere on every platform if you go to um, I'll, I'll spell it out it's l-i-n-k-t-r dot e e so it's almost like link tree but it's dot e e so link tr.ee forward slash lobby of hobbies. You'll find all of our um, social media platforms that we are on. Great. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining us, Jazz. I really appreciate it. Uh, sorry, let me bring you back up here. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. I'm, I'm still learning how to do this. This is a new idea I have for this show to get stuff. But I really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us, Jazz. All right. Thanks so much, Tim. You guys have a good night. All right, you too. So again, folks, uh, one of the things I was talking about that uh, we're going to be doing more of is, uh, like I said, that Jazz will be joining us is on Wednesday night. It's a new show uh, that's going on BGG called The More Meeples, The Merrier. And this is just to bring a whole bunch of different new faces to um, uh, the people out there in gaming. So here is uh, our last show we did uh, that we did in December. So I just want to talk about some of these people because some of these people have just been fantastic. It's really, really good. You'll get to see them. So over there, there's me up in the upper left, so I'll start that way. Estefania, Estefania, Estefania actually lives here in Vegas, and I met her. She has been so active in the, um, what do you call it, uh, prototyping community lately because she's got a brand new game, Pop Cats Fighter, that she's developing. So she's been really, really active doing that. She's been a great big part of the show. Crystal Dax. Crystal also is in Las Vegas. Uh, Crystal is a, a very good friend of mine. She actually helps us with Dice Tower West. She has been with, you know, helping Dave and I since MeepleCon 2 uh, for quite a while. Uh, she also has her own show on uh, Wednesday with Eric, every other Wednesday with Eric Summer from the Dice Tower. They do a show. She has Board Game Blitz. So she's really active in gaming. She has a Twitch channel. Uh, so go check them out. Over here uh, in the top right are Amy and Maggie. Those are Thinker Themer. Maggie is the themer. Amy is the thinker. Um, and they have a fantastic show. Uh, I've met them too. Uh, the funny story about those two is, uh, and why they're so near and dear to my heart is about, I don't know, maybe four years ago, they came to Las Vegas. I think it was to see Mariah Carey because uh, Amy has a big thing for Mariah Carey. And uh, they um, found Meepleville. They came into play and they spent like four, five, six hours in there. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. They came back the next day, spent another four, five, six hours. So it just made me feel so proud, so just honored that here I am in Las Vegas, the capital of entertainment, the world capital of entertainment. These two people all the way from the other side of the world spent two days, like six hours each day in my little store. I just felt really good. So, I really, And they're lovely. They have a great channel. So check them out. Uh, down in the bottom left underneath me, there's Jazz. You saw he was just, he just joined us right here. Look at that. Who's next to Jazz? Emerson Matsuchi. That's right. Century Spice Road, Spectre Ops. That's the designer. Emerson is quite fantastic. He was with us this past year at Dice Tower West, did a designer panel, walked around, helped people talk, played games. Emerson is just a fantastic human being, fantastic person. And I look forward to having him being a part of Dice Tower West in the future. There's Ruel, as you just saw in the chat. Uh, Ruel, I met also. He came, to he came and did an interview with me um, at Meepleville when he was writing for Geek and Sundry, because Ruel was on a lot of the shows with um, Felicia Day. I hope that's, not, hope that's her. I don't know. I don't watch. I don't know those uh, uh, hostesses or whatever you call them. Um, but he was on there a lot. He has his, you know, so Ruel's a great guy. He has all the TV channels. You just saw him in here. So you can check him out all over. And again, he'll be with us on Wednesday night uh, too. Uh, there is, I'll get to Chris last. There is Dwayne. So again, I, it's just so great. I got to meet all these people. Dwayne, I just met a week ago. 
He is, his daughter lives here in Vegas, and he was in town, and him and Alicia came over to Meepleville, so I had a chance to go meet them. He has a channel, Blackboard Gaming, which we were talking about, trying to get Alicia into uh, board games and stuff like that. So uh, he'll be on the show Wednesday also. And last but certainly not least, Chris Yee right here. Uh, Chris is a Las Vegas native. He was born and raised here in Las Vegas, grew up here, and I've known him ever since I opened Meepleville because he's a big gamer, him and his wife. Uh, Chris was with me from the very first show that I started. He's been there every one except one. He, he's just a fantastic friend, a great ally, just great everything. And here is the thing which is so great, uh, and we're so happy about Chris. He, a month ago, just got hired by the Dice Tower. That's right. Chris is moving Wendy, his daughter, I don't know her name, and his mother-in-law. They are all moving to South Florida uh, to live down there so they can be part of that little community that Tom has created. And he will be working for the Dice Tower. So you'll see him probably doing reviews. He's going to be doing editing and a lot of stuff behind the scenes at first. But now he's a full true uh, paid employee working for the Dice Tower. It's fantastic. So really, really glad, really happy for Chris. So that is fantastic. So again, folks, this show will be on Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Just go right to BoardGameGeek.com uh, and we'll be right there on the front page. All right. So you can go ahead and watch us there. All right. So let me go ahead and find my cursor. Where is it? There it is. Go back here. Oh, that's me right there. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about are some new releases. So where were we over here? Uh, got my screen share. I got that, that, that. Here we go. Okay, so if you go over to Board Game Geek, you will notice in the news section, all right, that uh, W. Eric Martin, <laughs> he always has that W, right, the W dot Eric Martin in front of his name. He's got a new thing right here if you notice. So check out the games being released in January, April 2021. So he's got a brand new thing. I think this is a brand new thing that he's doing that he will be updating regularly that is going to constantly update the games. So right here, check out games that are being released. And uh, oops, maybe I need to go over here to show you. Yes, so here's January and February 2021. So as you can see right up top here, it tells you the titles and you can sort here. Now, how I like to sort, and again, because right, we're all dorks, we're all nerds. We want to see what other people like because that is kind of a good indication, right? The more people who are able to do the research, play the games, play their tour types, maybe the Germans, because a lot of games get released in Germany. So maybe the people in Germany get to play them before we do. So they get their opinions in before us. So I like to sort this by thumbs. So if we go to thumbs, which are technically hot, right? Then you can see what comes up and look at what's number one. This is my game, Hollertau, right? by Uwe Rosenberg. So this is the game that I'm most excited to get to the table. And as you can see, it is, it's coming out January, February, and it's also top. And you've got Maglev here, Cubitos, Macro, an expansion for Seven Wonders Duel, an expansion for It's a Wonderful World. So just a bunch of really, really good stuff. Oh, look, here it is right here. I'm going to do it after this show. I should probably do it on this show. No, I don't want to. I, this table's a mess. I don't have enough room here to open up my anachrony fractures of time box. Oh, my God. It's going to be fantastic. I'm so excited. Um, but here it is. Yeah, the infinity box. Oh, it's going to be it's going to be great opening up that. Oh, here it is. That's going to be in there, too, I think, right? That Yeah. So that's really good. So anyway, so there is, is a, a spot to get some really – check out some really, really good new releases. So, um, yeah, and then the last thing I want to talk about, oh, wow, we've been we've been doing pretty good, and thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I really appreciate all of you. Oh, you're not seeing what I'm seeing? Oh, I wasn't, uh, Flo? Oh, you guys didn't see that? Let me try that again. Oh, thank you for letting me know, Flo. So you're not, you're not, oh, you're right. Why is that not happening? You saw the website, but not the games. Oh, did I not have the right tab? Oh, you know what? 
Oh, that's right. Cause it, it oh yeah. Cause it, yeah, there we go. Oh, I see what happened now. Again, I'm sorry. Thank you for letting me know, Flo. It's because of technology. It it jumped to another tab. So that's why you guys weren't seeing that. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> anyway, I'm learning, right? So this is my very first one. So uh, that way I will know for next time. But thank you for letting me know, Low Flo. I really appreciate that. Images static, yes. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about is, again, uh, what's been going on with Meepleville and let you guys know about that. If anybody has any questions, I'll try to answer them. But again, uh, Ed, Flo, who else you got there? Emmanuel, Ruel stopped in, Jazz, John, Sean, uh, Triple, what is that? Triple 07. Thank you, Pronto Hornblower, Ed McLean, uh, Tommy, he comes quite a bit. Thank you, John, Rob. Yep, all you people, thank you so much, Graylon. Um, I really, really appreciate it. It's so great that uh, you guys are so wonderful, and I hope I get to meet a lot of you in person. You know, isn't that a great thing with this? Uh, that That's the one really kind of, you know, uh, what do they say, a blessing in disguise, right, uh, with this whole COVID thing. Because, yeah, a lot of us have been locked down. A lot of us haven't been able to live our normal lives, to do our normal things. However... I have got to meet 50 new people at least um, during this pandemic, whether it's, you know, video chatting, playing werewolf, doing this or whatever, doing interviews. I just got to meet so many people that I probably wouldn't have had the chance to meet before. So when those opportunities come for us to get together again in real life, it's going to be fantastic. I'm going to have so many more friends to get together and uh, play with and see. And uh, Robert Cox. Oh, he just moved around the corner. Well, fantastic, Robert. It's good. So uh, what I wanted to show you is, what was it? It was about uh, about three or four weeks ago. We had a, a photographer. I had a photographer from the Las Vegas Weekly. They called up and they wanted to do a piece on Meepleville because they wanted to do a piece where people can go and buy board games for Christmas. And they specifically wanted children's games. And I was like, hey, we don't really have a whole lot, but you're more than welcome to come in. And they did. And they took some fantastic, fantastic photos. Now, I hope uh, this isn't going to... Let me go here. Yes. I think you should be able to see this. So again, Flo, you can be my um, uh, monitor. Uh, let me know if you see this. But so... So here's the thing. Uh, he's a professional photographer, and they came and they took pictures of Meepleville, and they are fantastic. Right? I was like, wow, my place looks so cool. So anyway, as you guys can see, this is uh, uh, what you see from the outside. This is uh, just our you know signage or whatever you want to call it, electronic sign. And uh, here is the – you're looking in – to the lower area then uh here so these it's funny because they had five specific games and it's obviously was a gamer i believe um they wanted to feature and they wanted to highlight because they wanted games that were not necessarily excuse me not necessarily kids i guess i should say family they wanted to see you thank you flo they wanted to see uh they wanted games for the family so the five games that they picked as you can see they wanted new york slice Catan. Dungeons and Dragons, Confident, which is brand spanking new. It's only been out about four months. So I'm surprised they even knew about that one. And they wanted an exit game. And exits are the escape room in a box. So it was very cool how uh, they knew exactly what they wanted. And, uh, oh, hello, Wyatt. Good to see you. Yeah, how you been out there? Wyatt moved away. And I hope you're doing well, Wyatt. Thank, Wyatt, thank you for joining us. Um, so they had these five specific games they wanted to uh, see. So here's those. Um, now, for any of you who are into D&D, &D, these right here are original from 1974. These are the very first. I got a little showcase. I have like a little museum area. Well, I like to call it a museum area, but it's really just a couple of shelves, a couple of uh, display cases. Uh, some of my more treasured items, I guess you could say, are more collectible stuff I like to have. But anyway, uh, these are some original D&D &D stuff I have, and I have some like DM screens and some other stuff, but these are in the glass case. So uh, yeah, and a lot of people who play D&D have never even really seen this, this stuff. So we took these pictures. So one of the things I like to collect personally are the, um, oh, look at Emmanuel. <laughs> he 
he wrote, he wrote, oh my. So I guess uh, somebody got excited, right? Well, that's good, Emmanuel. I'm glad. So you can, you can appreciate that. So um, yes. So well, one of the personal things I like to do is I like to collect TV show games. Um, now, a lot of these are uh, from my day because like I said, I'm 57, and some are even before my day that I have. Uh, but these are just some of them. I have these up on the walls because I just think they're kind of cool, right? Because anybody who comes in, they're like, Mork and Mindy had a board game? You know, play like you would just never think that. So it's just nice decoration, I think, to have it. So I have uh, quite a few of these. Uh, next, uh, here's just a nice thing with um, – oh, thank you, Flo. Yeah, she loves the nostalgia. She's seen it all. I don't know if you've ever forgiven me, Flo, for getting rid of your couch. Have you? <laughs> when, when I first made the cafe, I, try, I tried to make it with couches and, like, you know, with plants and just try to make it, like, I don't know, whatever. And uh, Flo kind of claimed a couch, and uh, she was mad at me when I got rid of it. So, yeah, there's that. But look at this. Doesn't that look so nice? See? That just looks really, really nice. I don't know if it's the lighting or what. But we have a raised ceiling, so uh, I don't know what you call it, um, industrial ceiling or whatever you call it. But uh, the people that were in there before us, they made these really nice soffits. If you can see the uh, round things up here, like a, so it's got really nice shapes in the ceiling. It looks like a big puzzle piece. But it, like this, just it just looks so nice. I'm like, wow, my place looks really nice. I'm kind of proud of it, right? So that looks really good. And look at this. This is kind of like the very front of the entrance, the retail side. Uh, cause the door would be like over here, right to the right of this uh, panel. That's where it would be. So you'd walk in sort of kind of looking at that on the right side. Uh, this is the retail section right there. And, uh, let me see over here. So this is Lord of the Rings section. Cause what I did in the back in our library area is I have these sections, Lord of the Rings. I have transportation. I have uh, zombies, werewolves, monsters, um, some other things, whatever. Uh, but I just wanted sections so like people could come in because it's pretty intimidating. I've noticed this a lot when uh, people walk into Meepleville and all they've played is like Monopoly or Sorry or Cards Against Humanity, or whatever, and they see all these games, they're pretty intimidated because they. I've had people say they literally think I have every game in the world, right? Because they've never seen that many games in one place before. So I've got like little sections like this all over. Ah, oh, look at that. Doesn't that look, that just looks so nice. And again, look up top with the soffits, right? How they look like puzzle pieces, how they're really like rounded and, and cut out. But I mean, like when you have a professional photographer take pictures, it just looks so good. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so excited. These pictures look fantastic. Um, so yeah, you guys can go to lasvegasweekly.com or whatever it is, uh, I think, and check these out, but they just look so good. Look at this shot. It's just so nice uh, because uh, our right side is uh, really, really long. Like when you walk in, um, and I know like Flo and Wyatt, you know, people who've been in there, they can uh, see this. But yeah, this looks all the way, like basically you're like, he's almost got his back at the front uh, bookcase or front shelf window looking all the way and all the way back there. That's the back door to go out. And back there, the the uh, the men and women, the bathrooms, and and over here, back there, that's like little library area I was telling you about. Oh, here's some more of the D and D pictures that uh, in there um, from some older D and D sets. Uh, you can see that I've got in the in the case there. Um, again, this just looks so nice. I mean, <laughs> all you Vegas people, right? You you know that it's like it. It doesn't look that nice, like, right, when you walk up or you come in from the outside. But that looks nice, right? <laughs> that looks so good. I'm just so giddy. It's just, it's just, it's fantastic. Um, here's another uh, New York Slice picture he took. There is our tiny little cafe. I'm kind of embarrassed. The shelves over there with the drinks. That used, they used to be full because we used to have so many beers and wines and drinks. But, you know, since we don't have that many people coming in. Oh, thank you, Sean. Oh, is that Sean Gilliam? Is that? Oh, yes, that's Sean. Thank you so much, Sean. I think that's Sean, if that's if that's the right one, uh, that donated those games to us because he's moved out of town. Yes, I really appreciate that. Sean was a great member. Also, him and his wife used to come in and play. I used to. I saw Sean last time at uh, uh, 
Gen Con, I think, last year. We bumped into each other. But there's our cafe. And, uh, you know, we sold beer, wine, pizza, and stuff like that. Just a little tiny cafe. Where is my cursor? Oh, there it is. Next, again, look at that. That just... You know, I don't I don't know what it is. The the lighting, just the way he framed it and did it. And again, there's a there's more of a picture of the ceiling. Um, but you can just see how it just looks really cool. I've always thought of putting like decorations like around these these things right there, just some kind of stuff. Um, but it's really nice. And for people who haven't been there in a while, oh, it is Sean. It is you. Yeah, thank you, Sean, for joining. I really appreciate that. Sean was so nice to donate some games to Meepleville in the library. Um, because our library for Dice Tower West is going to be fantastic. We are probably going to have about, you know, three, 4,000 games in the library for Dice Tower West in 2022. So make sure you get your tickets when they go on sale for that. Um, so yeah, so this is the upper area. Um, and as you see, it's not, there's, it's kind of spread out, not as many tables as usual because, uh, you know, of, uh, restrictions, seating, stuff like that. Uh, it's just more advanced D and D, some more older D and D books. Um, so yeah, in a case, I uh, I've got some weird games because again, I just want people to I like I take people back here all the time just to let them know that there is literally a game for everything. Because like I said, when people come into Meepleville, a lot of times they're very intimidated by seeing all those games, and I just try to tell them, hey, listen, there's really no need to. Whatever you like, if if you like fishing, I have a fishing game there. If you like sewing, if you like stamp collecting, there's a stamp collecting game there. Whatever it is, look, there's a Justin Bieber game, a Cash Cab game, Kevin Bacon game. It doesn't make a difference. Whatever you like, whatever you're into, whatever your hobby is, there is a game for you. So that's what I really try to. Uh, uh, let people know and to tell them uh, that there really is that. Uh, again, see, these are these are my age, right? These are my... So, Flo, I'm not trying to tell your age, but I think you might remember these two, right? All in the family, Archie Bunker. Uh, look at that. People are always, like, just giddy, like, you know, they're like, Archie Bunker game? What the heck can that be about, right? Um, New York Slice, again, they just, because they were doing that game. So here we go. So here are some more of my uh, TV show games. Oh, MT Creations. I know who that is, and I can't think offhand. But thank you for joining us. I appreciate that. Yes, well, thank you. I'm glad you're looking at it. See? But, uh, yeah, see, look, as they even have soap opera, as the world turns. I don't even think that soap, soap opera's on anymore. The Bugaloos. I used to watch that Saturday morning as a kid. It was like, like a stupid show. Columbo. Now, Patty Duke was before my time. Um, Kreskin. My wife and I actually went to see him when he was doing a show here in Vegas probably 10 years ago, whatever. But Wheel of Fortune over here, you can see like Ben Casey, that was before my time. Rin Tin Tin, Gomer Pyle, I remember. Um, ben Casey was before my time. Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. So yeah, I just I like those shows. They're, uh, oh, Aunt Madeline, that's right. That's who you are. Thank you. There's my aunt. She came and joined us. Um, so yeah, so there's that. More uh, New York Slice. And there we are, back to the beginning. So there we go, folks just to go ahead and show you some more of uh, that. But uh, yes, Mr. Castor, remember all those games? <laughs> yes. So you're old too. Thank you. You're on, you're on my side of, uh, of the, uh, of the age spectrum, right? So that's good. Um, but yeah, so um, well, thank you. I, I really think we had a good turnout. I really appreciate this. This was uh, the first of uh, the new shows. Um, and again, um, I'm going to try to do this every Monday, uh, to talk about new things. Uh, look for me on uh, the new show I'll be doing on the dice tower, which is a uh, real exciting. So I'm excited about that. And also again, don't forget our show Wednesday night, 6 PM Pacific time, uh, on board game geek. Just go to the main page. We will be broadcast there right on board game geek. However, if you'd like to be involved in the chat, go to Meepleville Twitch or Meepleville YouTube. And speaking of Meepleville Twitch, while you're here, I don't know whether you're watching on YouTube, which I see a lot of you are watching on YouTube. If you could, uh, at the end of the show, go over and join our Twitch channel, okay? Follow us on Twitch, so that way you'll know when I pop up and I do shows and we do things, you can go ahead and watch us over there on Twitch as well. I really appreciate that. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Coaster. I really appreciate that about the uh, interviews. So yeah, you can watch all the interviews on the YouTube channel, all that kind of stuff. But again, it has been just about an hour. 
You should do a top TV show in, of top retro games. You know what? I will be because in the warehouse. Um, so let me tell you a, a little story real quick, folks, before I go. I'm sorry. Uh, I think my nose is running. I got some tissue over here. Ah! There we go. Sorry about that. Um, yes. So we got a donation just like Sean did, right? Sean donated, you know, maybe 20 or 30 games. It was fantastic uh, to us for the library. Uh, there was a gentleman, make a long story short, he donated about 5,000 <laughs> games to us um, because uh, he really loves the Dice Tower, really loved what we were doing, wanted to keep uh, the library so he didn't have to transport it back and forth across the country. So Dave and I drove to Colorado, and we drove two 26-foot U-Haul trucks. Two 26-foot U-Haul trucks. Back to Las Vegas. And let me tell you something. Dave and I were terrified, especially me. I'm, I'm terrified of heights. But it was in the winter. It was in March. It was right after Dice Tower West. Dice Tower West ended Sunday. We flew out to Colorado on Friday. Um, so it was in March. And we drove back. And um, so anyway, we have we had to get a warehouse. So we, we now have a warehouse where the Dice Tower West library is. And... The reason I went around all this story, Emmanuel, is because uh, it was donated by somebody who is about 70, I would say, and it was literally his lifetime of games. So he has, talk about retro games, there are so many. I was like, when we, we, were, when we were loading up games, I was like, oh my God, I've been looking for that game. I wanted that game. I was looking for that game. Oh, I played that game. He had so many retro games. So yeah, there's a great resource. And it's one of those kind of things that Dave and I have always talked about. We wanted to try to put together some kind of museum because to be perfectly honest, it, I, I mean, just, just to me personally, having all of those games just sitting in a warehouse and not being able to be enjoyed or appreciated by anybody, you know, it kind of, I don't like that. Because it'd be nice if people could at least see them, touch them, look at them, do something with them, but just sitting in a warehouse on shelves, right? So we want to try to find a way to get more people um, to appreciate those games. So yes, I definitely will do something with uh, TV show games and retro games. So uh, yeah, we got some questions. Everybody has any more? I'll try to get those answered before we go. So does Dice Tower have one library or more? Well, we have... Um, we, we did only have one. Um, so, yes, so, John, we do have two now. We will have two. But this year, uh, so, yeah, that's a whole long story. I won't get into the whole thing. However, this year, we took the Dice Tower Library, because there was only one, all the way from Florida, had it shipped out <laughs> to Las Vegas. Um, all, I forgot how many there were. Um 30 shelves or so. I, it, was, it was just whatever. Uh, but it was, yeah, it was uh, too expensive. We we spent um, too much money um, doing that, and we're not going to do it again. That's why we got the games donated to us. So if any of you, right, I'll just put it out there, are looking to donate games, want to get rid of them, uh, to go to a good place, we'd be more than happy to take them and put them in the library. Uh, it'd be really good because we are going to be building two separate libraries. <laughs> Yes, John. Yes. Oh, you came to the show late. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned it again. I'll mention that again. Yes. <laughs> I was surprised. I, I talked about that at the beginning of the show. I am doing that show. Uh, yes. To be honest with you, the, the, the basic idea is um, because, well, that's kind of a good segue to go back to that because of this collection, because of the warehouse, because the games are essentially right. Tom's mine and Dave's are all of ours, you know, for Dice Tower West. Um, and we have all these games sitting there. One of the ways, like I said, because so I don't have to have, you know, get this bad feeling of them just sitting there. One of the ways that, you know, we thought about of getting them exposed to the public, well, Tom came with this idea, is for me to play these old games, to play some of them, and then come on a show with him or Z uh, every week or every other week. And I can talk about them as having just played them. And then he can talk about them as having having uh, remembered them. So um, this way it's a good it's good for a lot of people in a lot of reasons, right? Because even today on his show, if you were watching that John, he did a games played in 1991, right? Like 30 years ago or something. Because a lot of times we forget games that are that old. Some of you out there, 
then you know who you are. We weren't even born back then, <laughs> so you don't even know those games. And then there's a lot of people like me. I only got into this hobby in 2007. So I've only been in it for about 13 years, 14 years now. Some people have only been in it three, four years. So there's a lot of people who haven't even played games that were 10 years old, 15 years old. So I think it'll be a good way to kind of remind people games that were good 10, 15 years ago that are still good that they may want to play because aren't we all sort of caught up a lot of times in the chase of the cult of the new? And this will be a good way for us to kind of revisit those games and for me to visit a lot of the games the first time and again for Tom's and Z and for any other people that he may have doing it with me to go ahead and remember some of the uh, games that they played before. So yes, there we go. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Well, thank you folks um, for joining. I really, really appreciate it. And again, we'll be doing this every Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and then don't forget Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific time on Board Game Geek. Hopefully we'll see you there. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful evening. Stay safe. And please just wear a mask. <laughs> it's not that hard. Let's help each all, all each other out. Stay safe and stay healthy. All right. Bye, folks. Have a wonderful night.